so this is place to boo fan and was wondering which spoiler boo review will be doing for Halloween of this year between Beast from 2022 and Invisible Man from 2020. In the end, I decided why not do a spoiler boo review of both. So that's what I'm gonna do. I will do a spoiler boo review of Beast first, and next time it's Invisible Man. Now, as for what I think of Beast. It's a fucking great movie, one of my favorite horror movies of 2022. In fact, let me check. Yep, out of all the horror movies released that year, it's definitely ranked number one. Anyway, with that all being said, and without further ado, let's review the fucking movie. Now, the movie begins by showing us a bunch of poachers who are killing the fucking animals in the middle of fucking Africa, and they are doing so illegally. Now, this is a very important scene that you should keep in mind for the rest of the movie. There isn't much I can say about this specific scene, but it is still important and you should keep that in mind for the rest of the movie. And then Nate has some weird dream. Yeah, I don't know what the hell that was about. And then Nate wakes up in a small plane that's flying. Is this really the best place to take a nap? And then Nate's daughter's complain. Honestly, I don't have a problem with that since it's normal. And then they arrive in me through fucking nowhere. I'm not saying that because I don't know where that is. I'm saying it because they're saying that in the fucking movie. Dad, are you sure he's coming? Well, I hope so. Because an Uber would take a long time to get here. Not to mention it would be very fucking expensive too. Hold on. Would that Uber even arrive here? I mean, it's a little bit bit clear in the movie that you're in the middle of fucking nowhere, so I doubt an Uber would even arrive here. And then Nate meets up with Martin, which is a long time friend. And they are meeting up with each other after having not seen each other for fucking years. You know, that is interesting. By the way, Martin is definitely one of my favorite characters of the movie, along with Nate and his daughters. And several other characters too. Yeah, this movie is full of great fucking characters. That's one of the reasons I like it so much. And then the group drives to Martin's place. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention about Martin too. When he drives, he gives a lot of fucking useful information. Meaning he's a great tour guide. Nice! Is that the, uh, Phantom? Yep. No. Yep. You still didn't fix it? No, I was waiting for you to come back and see if you Me? could get it running here. Right. Why the hell would you keep it there this entire time? And this has probably been there for years. I think it's there, but beyond repair at this point. Keeping this there is such a waste. I mean, are motorbikes even useful? I think they don't fucking know where. I don't think they are. Yeah, uh, place is a real mess. Have to excuse it. You shouldn't be saying this so openly, like it's so that you'd be proud of. If the place is a real mess, fucking clean it up. I mean, if you live on your own, which I assume you do, it's your fucking responsibility to clean the place up at least once a week. How do I know this? Because I live on my own and do it just that. There is really no excuse not to. So, um, Uncle Martin. Yeah. What's your Wi-Fi password? Just so I can, you know, like, connect to it, something? Oh, yeah, sorry. We don't actually have Wi-Fi or cell phone signal here for the next 10 do? days. No. Yeah. No, no. That's not fair. No, you'll be all right. What? There's plenty to see, though. Don't worry. You won't miss your phone. Honestly, this is relatable. But I'm in another country. I feel very uncomfortable when I can't access the internet there. Or at least I used to. Nowadays, I don't even think about going online unless I'm looking for certain information and only go online to check messages on YouTube, Skype and Discord once a day. I usually don't think about going to the internet that much. I don't go abroad the fucking country to do things I can easily do at home. I go to another country to do things I can't do at home. So just experiencing nature that's unlike anything in Iceland. Or to go to iconic buildings such as the Eiffel Tower or the Statue of Liberty. Also, the guy is absolutely fucking right. They do get over this very damn quickly. They don't bring up the fact that they can't go online anywhere else during the entire fucking movie. Now not just something in the movies I didn't notice while I was watching it in theaters. That's the fact that there's a fucking art gallery here. And I have to say, the art gallery looks fucking beautiful. Oh, and today it talks to Meredith to let her know that dinner is ready. As it turns out, she packed for him all his stuff. Of course I, but that's beyond fucking awesome. He's lucky to have a daughter like that. And then the group has dinner together. And then there's an argument going on at the dinner table, which I don't mind. It's normal for a family. And then Nate and Martin have a friendly conversation in the backyard. And we get to learn some important information about Nate's life in that conversation alone. 
His vibe died of cancer, which sucks. Wow, that's very fucking dark. And he didn't get to spend much time with his two daughters because of a divorce. And yeah, a divorce fucking sucks, don't talk about it. But at least he's spending time with his two daughters a lot in this movie. You know, the movie never actually shows past events in form of a flashback in this movie. And you know, that's totally fine. A movie doesn't always need to do that. Sometimes it's just enough when it's been talked about in the dialogue. And for this movie specifically, yeah, that's honestly more than fucking enough. We don't need to see everything that happened. The dialogue alone gives a lot of background information that we know a lot about these characters from that. And honestly, I like it. And then the next day, after the Cooper's about to head for another drive, the two girls argue with each other. Which again, I don't have a problem with such its normal behavior. And then, while driving, we get to see more of the nature. And the birds of the animals too. And I have to admit, it looks fucking beautiful. The beautiful African nature is honestly one of my favorite aspects about this movie. And then the group meets up with a very good friend of Martin Banshee. And he looks like a very cool guy. And it's clear that he knows a lot about the animals just like Martin does. And then we're introduced to the Lion Pride. And I have to say it looks very damn nice. And then one of the lions starts hugging Martin. I have to say but that is beyond fucking up from. And it's not only that but two lions start hugging him. Damn. He must be very fucking loved by these lions. Which is a good thing that shows that he's raising them well. Now one of the lioness acts aggressive. She is in a lot of fucking pain and I can clearly see that something terrible happened to one of her legs. Man that sucks. I hope she will recover from that. And we later find out that was caused by poachers. Those goddamn motherfuckers. I just want them stopped as soon as possible. They should be in fucking jail. And then they get back to the car and drive to a village. Okay, so guys, listen, this is not a tourist village, okay, it's a, it's an actual real place where people live. Are you implying that's the opposite of a tourist attraction? I mean, there are many places where people live which are massive tourist attractions, just as New York City. I mean, I get your overall point, but it was kind of weirdly worded here. But the place looks like a ghost town. What the hell happened here? Unfortunately, all the villages have been slaughtered. But so that looks like a fucking lion spite. Yeah, Martin finds it very strange, I don't blame him. Also, seeing all those villages down there, Brutally murdered. It's very fucking disturbing. Never make it clear. It takes a lot to disturb me. Gory imagery doesn't disturb me. I don't find it disturbing because of how it looks. I find it disturbing because of the reason why this happened. And yeah, it is fucking horrible. Those poor villagers didn't fucking deserve this at all. So the group decides it's best to drive the hell out of there. And then the group finds a man who isn't paid. Oh man, I hope he will be able to survive. Now Nate uses an aid kit and tries to help that poor man. But unfortunately as it turns out, it's too late since he dies. Later on, so they attacks Martin. And then the lion starts attacking the car. And I'm gonna call this lion Dark Mufasa. The reason why I call him Dark Mufasa is because he is like Mufasa who took a dark term. And yeah, he is scary as hell. And scary motherfucker is right. He tries to attack Nate while he is in the car. Oh man. Unfortunately, the car fucking crashes. Man, that sucks. And unfortunately, the car won't start again. And then the car... Ned talks to Martin using a walkie talkie. Now Martin is at an island somewhere and unfortunately he is in a very bad shape. Now as a the doctor he gives Martin some usual advice on how he can stop the bleeding. Now Ned knows exactly what Martin tells him and wow this looks like it hurts a lot. But thankfully thanks to Martin screaming the group finds out that he's very fucking close by. Now Martin has some bad news. Dark Mufasa is staring right at him. Now, Ned tries to find the gun, but it's hidden behind a lock. And he decides to break it. I'm not sure if it's just a good idea. I'm not sure if Martin would have approved. He could have just fucking asked him where the key is. I mean, I know this is a desperate situation, but it's not that desperate. Asking him where the key is would have taken no time at all. Now, when Ned tells Martin through the walkie talkie that he's gonna use the shotgun, he tells him that it's a terrible idea. But maybe so, but they don't really have much, much choice, do they? And then Ned gets out of the car and aims a gun. I have to say, seeing Ned with a gun is very fucking bearish. Then Merritt goes to look for Martin despite her father clearly telling her not to. Honestly, I think she should have listened to her father. But it's understandable why she goes against what he says because she's worried about. Martin, which is understandable. Unfortunately, 
Dark Bufars are returns. Unfortunately, Dark Bufars are guessing got off night and he hides behind the car and Dark Bufars are it's very fucking close to successfully hitting him. Wow, man, this is scary as shit. The murder gets to Martin and he tells her that she should have stayed in the car. And honestly, I can't agree, but at the same time, though, it's understandable why she went after Martin. I mean, she was worried about him after all. And you can't really fight your emotions. But thankfully, no one managed to hit the fucking lion with a sleeping dart. Hopefully, that will slow the lion down. Thankfully, Dark Bufasa walks away. Now, thankfully, Martin walks back to the car with Martin. But at least that's a good thing. Now, when Martin gets back to the car, Nate tries to heal him, and it's, of course, hurts a lot, but he is an actual doctor, so I'm sure he will do the right thing. And then, long before the effects of the sleeping dart were supposed to wear off, Dark Mufasa is already back, damn! Does this lion have superpowers or something? It must have. There is no other logical explanation I can think of as to how the effects wore off so damn quickly. And they still try to get help through the walkie-talkie, but unfortunately to no avail. And then the two girls talk about many issues that they have with their father. Now, look, I understand that he's not perfect. But this is not really the time to address your issues with him. You're all in big fucking trouble with a small chance of survival. Can you please save that for later? Thank God. What happened with the lion? Tranquilizer then. Seen the effect of much, but I haven't seen it since before dark. Maybe it gave up. Maybe. Maybe not. So. Uh, everybody knows that a wounded lion is dangerous, but I've never seen anything like it. Multiple attacks. Without eating its prey. Attacking a vehicle. Lions don't do that. It's like he, he, he knows who his real enemy is. Meaning what? The poachers, you know, they take out the lions, they split up the prides, and then, well, now they're fighting back. This lion's gone rogue because they killed his pride, and now he's coming after all of us. Oh my god, from what you're telling me, Dark Bufasa is no ordinary lion. He's more vicious than the rest. Damn. I don't see him. Big pissed because of the poachers is totally understandable. The poor lion is wanted because of that, and it's not a want that heals easily. The sad part is, it seems that the lion is beyond saving. So, getting as far from the lion as fucking possible or killing it seems to be the only two options. And then we see that weird dream again that Red is having. Really, this is again. I mean, I suppose it serves some purpose, but this is just weird to me. Oh, by the way, I love this movie overall, but those dream sequences, yeah. I don't know what the hell the point of them are, or what purpose they serve. It's just weird, nothing else. And then Nate's two daughters are slaughtered by Dark Mufasa. Or at least it looks that way. But as it turns out, it was all a dream. Now normally I have a problem with fake outs in horror movies when someone doesn't actually die because it was all a dream. But I don't mind it in this movie because it makes sense that he would have nightmares about that lion slaughtering his two daughters. He's very scared that's gonna happen for fucking real to either them, him, or Martin. So it makes total sense he would have a nightmare like this. And then Nate dreams about his dead wife. Yeah, he misses her a lot, so it makes sense that he would dream about her. And then we're given some more backstory of what happened in the lives of Nate and his two daughters when Nate's wife died. And yeah, all of what I have been told is very fucking tragic. And then, they finally get some reception in the radio. But unfortunately, it's not as good as it looks, because the only people they are able to reach are fucking poachers. And they are very bad news. Now, Ned tries to have a deal with the poachers. It's not exactly a good idea, but he doesn't have much of an option. But unfortunately, after the poachers find out that Martin is in the car, who is an anti-poacher, they aren't willing to help the group out at all anymore. Damn, that sucks. That means the group is in even more fucking trouble. Oh man, this is truly a fucking terrible situation. And the worst part is, it's very unlikely that an actual help will come. Now that the poachers find out that an anti-poacher is traveling with Nate, he tells them, 
Calm down and try to rationalize with them. Yeah, no offense, man, but you can't reason with the answers. You should know this. You especially can't rationalize with fucking poachers or terrorists. And then Dark Mufasa attacks the poachers, which is what? He clearly doesn't like the group, so why would he save them? Now Nate talks about wanting to take one of the trucks belonging to the poachers and drive the hell out of there. Now look, I know you're desperate, but that's not a reason to do something this fucking risky. Those poachers have fucking guns. By doing that, you have a high chance of actually fucking dying as so they could shoot you after realizing one of their trucks has been stolen. Now he goes to one of the poachers' cars and realizes that he can't drive it since so the key is missing. Nate, you have a much bigger thing to worry about. If the poachers notice that you are stealing one of their trucks, they'll fucking shoot you. And then Nate talks about what to get for the keys from the poachers. Again, I must address how it's a fucking terrible idea so the poachers can easily fucking shoot him if they found out he was attempting to do that. The knight promises that he will be back in 10 minutes. Yeah, if you want to be dead by then, yeah, I'm gonna keep harping on this because this is a legit thing that he should worry about but isn't worried about for some reason. And then Nate hides from the lion, which reminds me that it's not just the poachers he has to worry about. It's the lion too. And Dark Bufasa could easily fucking kill him as well. And then Nate breaks the walkie talkie. Which is the stand up pool. After all, he would also want Dark Bufasa to fucking hear him. And then Dark Bufasa roars into the walkie talkie. And that, of course, makes the girls worried. But yet goes south, but there's a fucking snake in the tree that Nate is hiding at. But at least it causes Dark Bufasa to go away. What? Is he afraid of snakes or something? And then some strange man sneaks up on the car. Yeah, girls, you shouldn't let him in. Could be fucking trouble. Now Nate hides from the lion behind three brushes that are across the water. Yeah, honestly, I am very scared that the lion could step on those fucking branches and Nate could die because of it. His chances of survival are very fucking low, that's the scary part about this movie. But then Nate finally gets keys to one of the trucks belonging to the poacher. I'm honestly surprised that he managed to do it without getting killed first. Now Nate assures the girls that he's alright. But I know he's alright, but I am pretty surprised by that to be honest. And then Nate takes one of the guns from one of the poachers. Come on man, are you asking to be shot? Now I know that he has very limited options here, I'm aware of that. But I still think what he's doing now is far too fucking risky. And then Dark Mufasa is back at the car. And wow, this scary motherfucker is just as scary as always. And then Dark Mufasa starts attacking the car. Oh man. I hope Nate will be back soon, but I certainly doubt he will be able to do much. Fortunately, the girls managed to run the hell out of the car. But unfortunately, Martin is not safe. Science, while Dark Bufasa is attacking in the fucking car, it falls down the fucking cliff. Oh, man. Now, Martin uses fire to cause a fucking explosion while the car is upside down while Dark Bufasa is near it. But surely that will kill the lion, right? Now, unfortunately, Meredith is very hurt. So Nate does everything in his power to help. Now Nate is in fucking shock when he notices the fire and realizes Martin couldn't have possibly survived this. Yeah, he's definitely fucking dead. May this great man rest in peace. Now Nate decides that it's time to drive away. Honestly, I'm surprised by the fact that none of the poachers actually chased him and tried to shoot the truck he stole down. Personally, I think he just got fucking lucky that none of the other poachers tried to chase him for stealing one of their fucking cars. Now, before the group reaches the destination, which is a school, Nate decides that it's best to stop his car a bit before that, since the car might run out of fuel soon. They can't risk that if they have to escape with the car, which is understandable. And then they arrive at the appointed school. And wow, this place looks like it has been abandoned for years. And at the school, Nate tries to kill Meredith was very fucking injured. Yeah, 
Poor bird death. Oh, and apparently alcohol can be used for medical research as well. That's interesting. It's good to know alcohol isn't just something to get people pissed as drunk. And then uh, it finds a phone, but unfortunately it's not connected. Not only that, but the phone looks ancient as fuck. So that leads me to believe that not only has the school been abundant for years, but apparently it's been abundant for over a fucking decade since the phone looks that old. Yeah. And then Dark Mufasa returns. Okay, a couple of problems with that. First of all, how the hell did he manage to get to the school this quickly? Can Lion really go as fast as cars can? Second of all, he shouldn't even be alive. We clearly fucking saw the movie that he was hit by an explosion when he tried to eat Martin. There's only one explanation as to how he managed to survive that. This really is. A lion with superpowers, which I honestly don't mind. It makes the lion scary as hell. But yeah, this lion definitely has fucking superpowers, so don't talk about it. Again, don't mind that, since so that's what makes this movie so fucking scary. And then Nate discovers a rusty walkie talkie. Okay, why the hell would there be a walkie talkie in a school? I can't imagine that ever being useful in a fucking school. And then Nate starts attacking Dark Mufasa. Yep. Yeah. If Dark Mufasa can survive an explosion, he sure as hell will be able to survive those gunshots. Though to be fair, Nate must have that he got hit by an explosion, so he doesn't know that. And plus, he doesn't have any fucking alternative. Even though this won't kill him, sure as hell will slow him down. And then Nate gets his two girls to a room where they are safe. And honestly, they are safe there, but I'm not sure if going against that lion alone is a good idea. And then Nate challenges the lion. Yeah, it's not a good idea. He just asks it to be killed at that point. Especially when he uses a fucking knife to battle that lion. Are you fucking serious? Why would you do that? You don't step on the fucking chance against that lion with a fucking knife. I mean, don't you have a gun? You just used it a few seconds ago. It would be a much fucking better idea to use that instead of a fucking knife. But the other lions are not pleased the Dark Mufasa attacking dead. In fact, they're fucking pissed at defending by attacking him. And of course, because of that, Dark Mufasa gives up. Wow, I must say, I underestimated the intelligence of Nate. What he was planning on doing was actually a fucking smart plan. Way to go. Though, my issue from earlier still stands. It was very fucking risky to try to steal one of the cars belonging to the poachers. And the only reason he survived that without being shot was by pure fucking luck. I can't think of any other logical reason. And then we get that stupid dream sequence again. Yeah, I still hate it. And you know why. And it is still in my opinion the worst aspect of the movie. And then we cut to what I assume is a hospital in the United States. I mean it could be or it could also be a hospital in Africa. But I'm just gonna assume that this is a hospital in the United States. And I have to say, it's fucking great that they are finally back there. And Nate also explains to the girls what his plans were and that he knew that the other lions would attack if they noticed that the lion went rogue and was acting completely out of line. And I have to say, that was a fucking clever plan of him for sure. And then they go back to the area they were in. Bye! Why would you go back after such a traumatizing experience? All three of you nearly fucking died! And your friend Martin actually did end up dying! I don't get this, man. I don't get this at all. Now it's time for my overall thoughts. This isn't one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Not even fucking close. But I will say though, out of the decade so far, it definitely is one of my favorites. The lion is scary as hell and we also learn a lot of useful information about Africa. So you know what? I'm gonna give this movie the rating two thumbs up. It's fucking awesome. Well guys, we'll see you in the video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.